Hello everyone, my name is Eric and today I'm going to explain the rapture. First off, I would like to point out that the word rapture is rendered from the Latin translation of the Greek word harpazo. The Latin translation is rapturo, which is the word we get rapture from. The original Greek word harpazo means to seize, catch away, or up, pluck, pull, take by force. The word rapture can have the same meaning as harpazo, since rapture is used so much and people seem to understand it as being caught up, I will be using the word rapture in this video, even though the word rapture is not in the English translation of the Bible. I'm going to cover four parts in this video. They are, one, make a case for the rapture, two, show what it may look like, three, who will be taken or left behind? 4. How can a person prepare for the rapture? As you can see from this screen, you can fast forward to part 4 if you lose interest in the rest of the video. I believe part 4 is the most important part of this video, so please take the time to watch it. Matthew 24 verse 36 says, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. This means we don't know the day or the hour that Christ will return. Therefore, no attempt is made in this video to place a date or time on the rapture, even though you may believe you can infer that from the scriptures I use. This video is intended to establish a biblical foundation for a rapture and what it may look like. Near the end, I will also explain what we need to do to be ready for this event. So let's get started. Part 1. Make a Case for the Rapture I want to look at the Old Testament and see if there was any precedent set for this kind of event we call the rapture. There is one, and it happened to the prophets of God. This is really good, because God tells us in Amos 3 verse 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. That means God will warn us before he does things. Second Kings chapter 2 gives us a glimpse of what a rapture type event may look like. Elijah was taken in a whirlwind and Elisha was left behind. Matthew 24 verse 40 tells us that two will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. This is what happened with Elijah and Elisha. So this sets a precedence that a rapture type event is a method God uses to take his chosen people. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 verse 31 that he will send his angels to gather his elect. There were angels that took Elijah there was a chariot of fire and a whirlwind. How do we know it was angels? Hebrews 1 verse 7 Now about the angels he says, He makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. So we see it was angels that took Elijah up in a rapture event. Likewise, the Lord will send his angels to gather his elect. Who are his elect? Let's look at Colossians 3 verses 11 and 12 to find out. It says, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, foreigner, uncivilized person, slave or free man, 
But Christ is all things in all, therefore as the elect of God. I will stop right there. The elect of God are those that have accepted Christ Jesus. Some people have thought the elect of God are the Jews only, and that causes them to interpret Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 as only for the Jews, which is not correct. Part 2. Show what it may look like. There's three places in the four Gospels that tell us there will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and the powers of heaven will be shaken loose. After this, the Lord Christ Jesus will come in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet blast, and they will gather his elect from the four winds. This is the rapture that Christ is explaining there. Let's see if we can find this same rapture type event in the book of Revelation. Revelation 6 verses 12 through 17 shows Christ being revealed for all to see and all those same things we just mentioned are happening with the sun, moon, and stars. The rapture is not some secret event. It's a big event. You can't miss it unless you're hiding under a rock like those mentioned in verse 15. If you notice in verse 17, this is also the day of the wrath of the Lamb. There are scriptures that tell us we are not appointed to wrath. Here's some for you to look at. Therefore, the sixth seal fits very well with the elect of God being caught up and gathered from the four winds. So what happens when the trumpet is blown? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 and 52. Behold, I speak a mystery to you. We shall not all fall asleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in a glance of an eye, at the last trumpet. For a trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. And let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. These verses tell us that his elect are transformed from corruptible into incorruptible, at the sounding of the trumpet. After this, his angels gather his elect from the four winds. Did you know four winds is only found three places in the entire New Testament? Those places are Matthew 24, 31, Mark 13, 27, and Revelation 7, 1. These are the only places in the entire New Testament that you see the words four winds together. This is a very big clue that we are lining up biblical prophecy correctly. Revelation 7 verse 1 is a continuation of the six seal event. In fact, I see all of chapter 7 is a continuation of the six seal because the seventh seal does not happen until Revelation chapter 8. Here in Revelation chapter 7, you get to see those that were taken in rapture before the throne of God. Revelation 7 verse 14 is a key verse that says, These people came out of the great tribulation. It does not say they were martyred like those in the fifth seal. So they must be the saints of God that were taken in the rapture. 
Another clue that goes with the Four Winds clue is the parable of the fig tree, which is found in these verses. I will let you read the parable of the fig tree for yourselves if you desire. The words fig tree are mentioned in Revelation 6 verse 13, which is part of the sixth seal event. I believe these three accounts of the parable of the fig tree are three clues that Jesus gave to help us find the right scriptures in Revelation to match his prophecy. The key verse here is Luke 21 verse 31, which says, So also when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you compare this verse to Revelation 6 verses 13 and 14, you can see the picture that Jesus was giving to us. Verse 13 speaks of a fig tree that cast untimely figs. Then verse 14 tells us that heaven departed like a scroll, which is a picture of Luke 21:31, telling us the kingdom of God is near. Part 3. Who will be taken or left behind? In Revelation 6, verses 15 through 16, it says, The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. They were hiding from the face of him, setting on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Obviously, these people won't be taken. In Galatians 3, verse 28, it tells us there is neither Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, in Christ Jesus. Notice these people are in Christ, not in the world. Big difference. When the sixth seal happens, it will be a fearful sight. People of the world will be hiding, but those in Christ will be lifting up their heads because their redemption draws near. Those that are in Christ at his coming will have confidence, looking up and not hiding under some rock like the world will be doing. These are the people that are still alive on earth and will be taken up in the rapture. I would like to point out something here. Luke 21 verse 26 says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Notice it says they are scared of the things that are about to happen on earth. This goes great with Matthew 24 verses 37 through 39 which says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered into the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So we see that many are taken by surprise when the rapture event takes place. The rapture is not some secret event. It's going to affect everyone on earth. Let's get back to those that will be taken and those that won't. Let's read Matthew 24 verses 45 through 51. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord shall find him doing so when he comes. Truly I say to you that he shall make him a ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to strike his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, 
The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he does not look for him, and in an hour which he does not know. And he shall cut him apart and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. First off, I want to explain what the giving of food in due season means. Jesus told Peter to feed his sheep, which means to give his people the word of God. If a servant of the Lord is doing this, then he will be taken in the rapture. However, if the servant is evil and strikes his fellow servants, eats and drinks with the drunken, then they will be left behind. Let's look at Second Peter 2 verses 1 through 3 to get a clearer picture of what an evil servant looks like. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who secretly will bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their pernicious ways, and because of them the way of truth will be evil spoken of, and through covetousness they will use you for gain with well-turned words, for whom judgment from of old does not linger and their destruction does not sleep. This would be a great time for you to repent if you happen to be one of these individuals that are not feeding his sheep. Don't think the Lord delays his coming and you will get away with your evil deeds. This is a warning to all the servants of God that are not walking in the light as he is in the light. Part 4. How can a person prepare for the rapture? 1 John 2 verse 27 tells us, If we abide in him, then we will have his anointing or oil. Verse 28 tells us, If we abide in him, then we will have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. The world will be hiding from him because they were not abiding in him. This goes with John 15, verse 5, which says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Now let's go to Matthew 25 and look at the parable of the ten virgins. The foolish virgins did not bring oil. That means they did not abide in the vine. The wise virgins did abide in the vine. If you abide in the vine, you will bear fruit. Jesus tells us that you will know them by their fruits. In Matthew 25 verse 12, the bridegroom told the foolish virgins that he did not know them. So to be ready for the rapture, you must abide in Christ Jesus. So what does it mean to abide in Christ? Let's look at the warning given to us in Luke 21 verses 34 through 36, which says, And take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts are weighed down with headaches and drinking and anxieties of this life, and that day should suddenly come on you, for it shall come as a snare on all those setting on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, praying in every season that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which shall occur and to stand before the Son of Man. So we need to watch and pray to be counted worthy to escape the things coming upon the earth and stand before the Lord as mentioned in Revelation 7 verse 9. I would like to point out that watching and praying is abiding in the vine. How did I come to this conclusion? First off, what does it mean to watch? To watch, you need light, since you can't see in the dark. 
Let's look at Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 10. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable to the Lord. This means if you are abiding or staying in Christ, then you will walk as a child of light and produce fruit of the Spirit. You will be able to watch because you have His light. Let's keep reading further here in Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 11 through 14 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, sleeping ones, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. We see here that abiding in Christ is walking in the light, and when we do this, we are awakened, which means we watch. Notice verse 12 talks about things done in secret. This is the key to knowing if you are walking in the light or abiding in Christ. Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 through 6 tells us what our secret life should look like. Abiding in Christ is all the time, not just when you want to look good in front of others. When you are alone, do you pray? Do you think about heavenly things? Do you seek the Lord? What you do when no one else is looking will help you to determine if you are abiding in Christ. If you abide in Him, then you are ready to be taken in the rapture. In closing, I would like to say it's not the rapture itself that is important, but being prepared to be taken in rapture. Those that walk in the light will be ready for such an event. I encourage you today to start taking a serious look at your personal life to see if you are asleep with the world or awake in Christ. I will now read Romans 13 verses 11 through 14. This also, knowing the time that it is already time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in carousings and drinkings, not in cohabitation and lustful acts, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not take thought beforehand for the lusts of the flesh.